Alright, what is up you guys, and welcome back to an episode of Who Was Really Better. And this week, we're gonna cover the seahorses. Yes, Dragology vs. Kingdra. Now, I had this episode actually planned for um, oh, at least like half a year back. Just didn't get it in me to get it off, and uh, I'm happy with that. That's the meta kind of developed quite well for both these Pokemon and got really defined. More so, Kingdra has always been relevant as a more, one of the more really scary Swiss Swim Sweepers and uh, does very well at that, even so well that it has a good niche in OU to get a little swamp or whatnot. And Rogology, due to its revision as a C user, has both its defensive set as you both very well, but also the C user set has been phenomenal in RU. They both reside in RU right now and for different reasons. Kingdra is there because without rain, how dangerous is it really? It's dangerous not to be an RU. And Dragology has probably more league history than it has in the meta of RU. However, it is very strong and even more so, it's very, very strong in leagues. And the Pokemon is very hard to switch into. So what are we gonna do is talk about the overall configure as always, but of course their stats, their move pool, and what they can do in the different metas and leagues to find out which one of these two that really are better, we're going to introduce with the Pokemon first that was introduced, and that is, of course, Kingdra. So, when you talk about Kingdra, you're really going to cover the typing first. Water Dragon, I do believe, are a very slick few has this Pokemon. For the life of me, I just can't remember Palkia for a moment. I do believe there is one more. And if it isn't, how about that? Uh, it really is an interesting typing with a lot of benefits. However, it also has a few downsides, and I have more downsides now than it had before Generation 6. Uh, the fair introduction meant that the few resistance that it did get is now nerfed. And uh, Water Type really does bring a few things together. First and foremost, the Water Typing do help out with the Dragon's Ice Weakness, which is quite right. And the Dragon Typing helps out with the Grass and Electric Weakness towards Water. So, combined are actually really well. Um, However, you do lose a few key resistances, which stands out here as you have three main switches, fire, water, and steel, and you're weak to dragon. Always has been weak to dragon. And now, of course, with the introduction of fairy, we're weak to that too. It's not a huge bummer and a very, very passable uh, or patchable. However, it is something that should be always considered that this typing has, has had half the better moments, if anything. Um, stat attribution, well, look at them. I would define this as very balanced. 75 HP is quite right. 95 throughout attack, special attack, defense, and special defense is also quite right. Speed here, 85. It's it's average, above average in some extent. But it has its limits, um, which is why the Swiss Swim aspect comes in. As Dab and Sniper are unconventional, I could say at best. Uh, or not unconventional sniper has a really strong merit but usually you're gonna use swift move with this pokemon but sniper do boost the critical ratio by one and uh, this pokemon actually have a way of getting guaranteed crits which i do believe is one of the select few they can pull this off and for that reason it's actually kind of great um besides that um i wouldn't necessarily push it in much further um, if anything um, it's just overall a very balanced Pokemon with a lot of good benefits and I would say that the only downside is potentially that it doesn't excel in any of its stats which well which is why we have benefits in its ability to do other stuff with these stats combined and this brings us down to the move pool itself the move pool isn't necessarily very impressive as there are very select moves it does get however uh, much like a lot of really good viable Pokemon, it gets key moves that just make sense and makes the Pokemon itself very viable. Uh, first and foremost, we have Agility, we have Body Slam, Clear Smog, Disable, Double Edge, Great Commuter, which for the Focus or Focus Energy set is your main move. Uh, Dragon Dance, yes, this is a Pokemon that actually can Dragon Dance and is to an extent viable with it. Um, of course, you only see the set with together the likes of uh, Waterfall and whatnot, but it does get, and can be, I should say, a ferocious sweeper with dual stab and outrage and waterfall. Then with Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, Iron Head. Clearly, 
Outrage, <laughs> Protect, Rest, Dragon Pulse, Single Beam, Surf Toxic, Waterfall, Focus Energy, Splash, and it's all in there because of C Splash, Boost Yourself by Tree, we have Curse to get with Lives of White through Combination, we have Blizzard, Bounce, Brine, Water Pulse, Whirlpool, John, and Scald. So yeah, if I say anything that would benefit this Pokemon better, I would say it would fall somewhere down the line that, dear god, it has nothing for steals. And it means basically that why don't we see neither Focus Blast or something like Earthquake? It really is damaging this Pokemon. However, it does hit me really with the likes of Waterfall and should we say it even more, Hotter Pump does a significant chunk of damage and of course boosts it with Rain. It's phenomenal. Now, we have two sets to cover. Uh, the, the first one is of course the Focus Energy set. Uh, there is really nothing to it. Uh, use Focus Energy to get the likes of Agility and Draco and Hotter Pump and just blast through with scope lens, your ability being sniper and focus energy, uh, your Draco will crit every time, and crits means basically that any type of uh, debuffing or stat will be uh, negated. So you will not drop two, which is amazing. It makes this Pokemon really tough to switch into. Unfortunately, it usually is better to go in agility modest, and is because the damage output isn't necessarily there. Um, it is a massive, massive hit for it as while it resides in RU and it does punch all in, in all teams it fends off against, I would say that it's a very, very tough thing today to pull off. When it was introduced Generation 4, uh, or this uh, region, introduced Generation 4, it was a lot tougher in Generation 6 when it fixed the crit ratio and it got guaranteed crits. I remember this Pokemon being impossible to switch into, but it best said it's absolutely a swift swim set. Mainly because you can focus on being modest, uh, you get a boost by uh, by the rain with your hydro pumps, and uh, it just has overall a fair enough move pool. Hydro pump you get it with Draco pools or Draco, and Ice Beam solves just about everything. There really aren't necessarily nothing to it that would hold this Pokemon back, but it's just that it is finds its main niche in in rain, which means that you're supported by rain, which means you usually have to carry something like Swampert and just to make that work. And it's a very strong niche, but it's a niche that holds this Pokemon back to be very one-dimensional. But the things it does, it does probably among the best in the whole game and should not be underestimated because of that. So with all this really good thing benefiting, how does Kindra compare to Dragology? Well, they are significantly actually different between one another. This one is clearly more focused on offensive prowess. Dragology will introduce something different here. So when you talk about Dragology, you really just want to cover the more important stuff, which is its type combination. The exclusive, or at least in Region 6 exclusive, Poison Dragon. I do believe it was revised with the new Uber or Beast Boosting Pokemon. For the life of me, can't remember. Naganadel, I do believe it's called. But yeah, Poison Dragon, really, really interesting typing. A lot of key resistances, but a lot of weaknesses to watch out for, clearly. Um, Poison Dragon do nothing for each other, um, besides getting a really decent resistance <laughs> in grass. But besides that, we are resistant to bug, electric, fine, fire, poison, and water. So a lot of really like key things here, and of course, always be resistant to Vault Switching is or Vault Turning is phenomenal, a really, really great benefit for Regology. However, the weaknesses are plenty. Dragon, Psychic, Crowd and Ice. Yeah, all the weaknesses for these types are actually left there, so... It's it's amazing how this Pokemon has survived, but it has a lot of niches to fill the void, which makes Regology one of the more interesting Pokemon to actually talk about. Um, this Pokemon pairs really well with Pokemon such as Brown Song, for example. Uh, and if basically any levitating steel type will patch any issue uh, for Dragology in theory. Um, which is why this is a Pokemon that easily is glued in. It it actually fills the void of actually having key resistances. And just that speaks for it. 65 in its HP is awful. 75 in attack is awful-ish. Uh, defense 90, really good. Special attack at 97. Not super offensive, I guess. Uh, more offensive than Kingdra, but that, that's about it. Special offense, 123. Yikes. Yeah, that, that's bliss levels. That's incredible. But the speeds are at 44. 
Yeah. Look, it's defensive. Um, 90 and 123 in its defensive stats are really high. 65 really does let it down every constant attack, or I mean, its HP. But if you combine these, it, I would say it's a solid bulk. It is a Pokemon, however, that is forced to go last, which is always a bad thing unless you go for Trick Room. But it has a few abilities to actually make use of that. First and foremost, a Poison Point and Poison Touch. Poison Point is if you hit it, you have a 30% chance of actually poison something. Um, which works well with something like Dragon Tail. To force them to switch out to give them a nasty poison as they go out. That one being Poison Touch. I could actually reverse these. Poison Point is when you touch it. Poison Touch is when you touch them. Poison Point um, is really when they touch you. Damn, it hurts a chance to get poison to a physical contact move. But those are great. But th those were the merits of an NU Pokemon. Adaptability, however, was the reason this Pokemon went to UU Generation 6. You get your stat boost boosted by X2 instead of X105. I do believe this multiplier was 02 for all Pokemon in Generation 5, but they changed that, and which meant that Adaptability is now the real stab user. What this basically means is that your damage output is ridiculously high as long as it's one of your main stab. It's so high that those 97 special attacks really are put to the test. Um, and it's just really tough. Um, it's move pool, really shallow, but very relevant. And more importantly, its stab moves is still among the best stabs which you can get for it. We have Great Cometeor, we have Draco Pulse, Dragon Tail, we have Focus Blast to hit Poison or Steel Types, Haze, Hydro Pump, Outrage, Play Rough, Don't Ever Use These, Protect, Rest, Shadow Ball, Sleep Talk, Sludge Bomb and Wave, Skull, Icy Wind, Surf, Thunder, Toxic, Toxic Spikes and Waterfall. And I should have missed the movie with Thunder. Quite frankly, this Pokemon hits everything it needs to. For example, um, if you're feeling off against a Dragon type, you're always in bond with going for another Draco of your own. If you fend off against Psychic type, you have accessibility to Shadow Ball. Ground type, no problem. You got Higher Pump, you got Scald, and Ice type. Focus Blast, it, it's okay. Though the, the, the Pokemon you defend off against that does well versus this are Steel type, as it do resist in both of its stand, having Axe ability to Focus Blast really is very good here. It also can carry Hidden Power Fire if you want to capitalize on that, and it will be just fine. Overall, this move pool is super strong versus this Pokemon, and it hits so many things so hard. This is a Pokemon that is very, very tough to switch into, and a C Draco. Yeah, that could very well kill Safe. Now, its main issues is, as stated, it's a very, very slow Pokemon and are forced to at least have some investment to it to beat something like Defensive Beware or any base 50. And this Pokemon usually carries something like Black Sludge or Assault Vest. I prefer myself Black Sludge to get with Toxic Spice because if you're not going to hit something really hard, you can actually capitalize on this and try to go for Log with Toxic Spice the game. And uh, yeah, that's annoying. And Dragology actually walls so many things naturally that it can only set up Toxic Pipe and can win versus the matchup just by bulk alone. And if it forces the switch, it means there's a very strong chance of actually get that adaptability going on and hurt something very, very, very badly. So overall, there are a lot of things to be with Dragology, and the only thing it's going against it is possibly it's kind of shaky. Um, HP, but also a more shaky speed here, which forces it to take a hit before it retaliates. This should go without saying, but in a rain dance environment or rain team, I don't believe Dragology brings anything. Um, possibly boosted higher pumps, but it's King Draw all the way there, hands down. Um, but really, when you talk about these two Pokemon, you're gonna start thinking about how are they doing in their metas, but also just how are they doing in leagues. And um, I think for anybody who's been considering Kingdra, have you ever done that uh, without rain? No. There's for really good reasons for that. Its damage output is not that high. Um, the focus energy set, while good, it's forced to set up to hurt something in, in general, and even more so, you're very forced to go for possible agility even. So there are a lot of benefactors here for Kingdra to just being shy of good, but not always working. Dragaldi, however, while slow, 
it forces switches, it so hits well, it has hazards, it has a massive damage output and just key resistors that work well and actually move pull to deviate himself and actually offensively check the things that you're supposed to check it. For me, it's very easy to see while Dragalgi should win this one. It is just better glue to any team. Kingdra is phenomenal at what he does, among the best rain sweepers, absolutely. But that's where it all ends. It really isn't better than anything else, barring any other offensive wars type. Dragalgi, it brings a massive, massive strain to the matchup and it's very hard to prep for and even more so it brings so much back to the team it's a good team player and it even works as a C user far more reliably than Kingdra and even more so the glue aspect to it makes it very well for a lot of matchup for it to work naturally and win plenty of matchup because of it yes it has issues in its weaknesses but those issues are so easily patched and with so many resistors that there are matchup it just bulks through and forces out and, and forces them out and, and actually drain them out or bring it out Draco. It is devastating for any team to prep for that. Far more so than what Kingdra can provide. So I really hope you enjoyed this episode. It was actually kind of fun to talk about these two. As I said here, their meta development has been very differently from when I started and actually scripting this episode and when I scripted that, Kingdra was actually winning, but it just drug all has proven time and time again that it's such a good overall Pokemon, while Kingdra has been just underwhelming outside of range, it really is, and it is unfortunate because it's a great Pokemon that just may or may not actually be fall into the massive power creep that has been going on this last free generation. So with that, guys, thank you of course as always for watching, and join us next week for this matchup.